Baltimore Ravens make a play for Deontay Johnson. Congrats to both parties, right? That feels like a good move. Chuck said earlier on the on the hot seat, he said um, – he said they don't need a wide receiver. They need a damn DB, or they need to figure it they out do. on the defensive side of the ball. Now they got but, three I mean, new how coaches. Do they not take this though. I mean, Pat, here's the over, bet the over under. I mean, basically they just gave them to him. I mean, that sixth round pick that Baltimore sends to him is going to be as close to the fifth. I mean, you know, the fifth round pick for Baltimore is going to be somewhere in the 28th, 29th range of the fifth round. And that sixth round pick of Carolina is probably going to be the first pick of the sixth round. Mm. This was really a ridiculous trade. And then here's what makes this trade even better for the Ravens is they'll get the compensatory pick if if Johnson gets gets a you know if he comes out and somebody signs him, he totals into the compensatory pool. Mm. Like I don't know what like somebody explain to me what Carolina's doing. <laughs> I mean I, I don't understand it. I'm sure Luke Combs is wondering the same thing. <laughs> like what are we doing? What are we doing? Like, you know, we have no philosophy. We're giving away guys for 10 spots in the sixth round. Or seriously, but, when we could have had a compensatory pick for the guy. But uh, it makes. But David Tepper let them use his stadium, yep. the venue, everything like that. Raised $24 million for cool. Western I North Carolina. That. I'm all for that. I'm but, all for that. That's good. I'm all for good, that. Mo- good stuff happening. You trade away a guy for nothing. But he okay. should focus on his charity work and let somebody come in and run his football team. That might be a really good idea. Oh, what if it's because a wrong they're guy? going nowhere sure. fast. I they're going you, nowhere fast. I mean, Why don't you go, Lombo? I vote for you, Lombo. Why don't you? Yeah, right. You, you brother. You me. He would they interview you, me because I would tell him the they truth. He likes people that don't tell him the truth, I think. He likes people to tell him everything's going to be okay. Oh, Look, I, I've never seen a franchise as bad as Carolina. Even Sean Payton. I mean, there's a common oath amongst coaches in the NFL. Chuck will tell you. Rarely do you hear one coach talk about another bad program. And, right. and Sean said, well, that's really one of the worst offenses we're ever going to play. I mean, do you need to, if you're an owner, do you need to know more? I mean, like, seriously, I, I'm not, I, I think just I feel bad for Dave Canales because he got put in a job that he's not ready to play coaching. It's just not fair for him. Jordan Love uh, spoke about his groin injury. AJ, I don't know if you heard Jordan Love's groin might be stronger and uh, able to rebound better than anybody else. Here's him chit-chatting about the potential to play this weekend against the Lions. They have a bye the following week. Let's remember that. Definitely uh, feeling better. Uh, you know, I think every day there will be some improvements to it. Uh, but definitely feels better than it did on Sunday. Well, that how, said, you obviously want to play. How realistic is it that you're going to be out there? I think it's realistic. How comfortable would you be playing on, on no practice if that's the route you guys go? Yeah, I mean, obviously uh, not practicing during the week is not the ideal uh, format for trying to play a game. But um, like I said, things happen. So uh, if that's a scenario, um, you know, I know I'll be – be fine, but uh, definitely it's not the ideal scenario for going into a big week. Okay, massive week. Obviously, Malik Willis has played good football. AJ, who do you think ends up out there, and do you like what Jordan Love's saying here about his groin? Yeah, I do like how he, he's handling this. Was it Lombo who said he, he expects Jordan Love to be out there? Didn't it feels like that? everything that he's saying, kind of. is. Yeah. Shefty gonna... said that as well. Said he's going to okay. go Sunday. Dude. How do you feel about it? I absolutely love it. And then hearing him say that, knowing that your quarterback knows that it's all about the game and how you play it. Uh, that makes me feel good as well. <laughs> Shout out to Trips. Just had to get that in there. But, no, I mean, you know, we talked about it's a big, It's a big-time matchup, okay? I understand we got the bye week coming, dude. But this Detroit team's for real, brother. And we need our franchise quarterback out there because I think at home with Jordan Love, why not the Packers this weekend? What do you think, dude? If it was me, yeah. <laughs> with that defense, to your point, because you know Aaron Glenn's going to send bodies at him, extra bodies. If you know that guy's limited, he hadn't practiced number one all week, and number two, he's limited, and he can't, you know, he's not limited mobility. He can't get away from the from the yeah, pressure. Pack that groin, yeah. Because yeah, they, uh-huh. they have a hard sights. time running. They have a hard time. You can't run on Detroit, and they're going to get you in second and third and long pass situations, obvious pass situations. That'd be a, that'd be a tough duty. You think what just got with bye week coming? What would we? Well, because if you have a setback with a groin, even though you got a bye week, shit, those things can get to be two, three, four weekers. Depending on if you go aggravate that thing even more. And they've had success with Malik Willis. And Malik's won, to your point. Yeah, exactly. But this is for NFC North supremacy here. I agree. What the hell do you know, coach? Also, listen, I understand Malik Willis has won, but you can't play the Titans and the Colts every single week, okay? Amen. We got the meat of the NFC North schedule coming up. The Colts? And, yeah, I mean, look at, look at the Colts. <laughs> 
And look at the Titans. Those are, I mean, listen, I love Malik. He did what he had to do, dude. But we got games against the Lions, the Bears. Why? Don't you have any faith in your defense? Absolutely. Halfly? I also got faith in the guy we're paying 55 fucking million. He's ready to go, brother. Don't you have to protect him from himself? Our line's been pretty damn good. And everyone's talking about, hey, the Lions need to go trade somebody. They don't got no pass rush. So bring it, Aaron Glenn. Send as many guys as you want. Packers are going to be just fine. I didn't know you were such a big Packers fan, Hulkster. <laughs> well, I tend to pass around. I really like that Matt LaFleur. I like him a lot, dude. Any other Packers uh, legends you're a big fan of, Hulkster? I mean, do I have to say it? <laughs> We got a number four in a glass case in Hogan's hangout. I, I, I come up and tap that thing like the Notre Dame play like a champion side every time I go into karaoke before. You were with I him last night, song. right? Yeah, weren't you guys hanging out? Well, I mean, I have my speed dial. Yeah, we FaceTime five to six times a day. We were in the same spot together. It's but a rally? Or, <laughs> whoa. That's not what we were talking about, Chuck. You and Farmer ever play catch? What the? Listen, Farm knows the Hulkster's got hands. Like, I mean, last time I was with him, we're playing a little catch. He said, geez, Louise, Hulkster, you remind me of Bubba Franks, who's one of his best tight ends of all time. Of course. So what does that tell you about good old Hulkster's hands? Yeah, I mean, Hulkster could have been an NFL guy, huh, if you wanted to be. Pretty good. Uh, AJ, how do you feel about Coach Sirianni's messaging to the team, obviously? Yeah, I like it. He's trying to say, hey, don't get on this roller coaster. Whatever they say, good or bad about you, it doesn't really matter. We're going to do what we do inside this facility. But I love him kind of praising them finishing the runs and stuff. You know, I, I love that when you see teams, like whoever is being the aggressor like that. And I think it's it's clear in those clips that, that he that's what he wants to do. He wants to set the tone early. And like, hey, I don't care if we punted. We ended that on a, like a – that's a positive note. If we end like that and you, you're knocking two guys back on the sideline. This is what we want to be known as, okay? I don't care that we punted or didn't score. This is what we need to be known as. Sets the tone for everything. Coach Pagano, that's the first time I've ever been in a meeting with Coach Sirianni. Mm-hmm. I've seen his press conferences, obviously. I've seen his walk off the field. I've seen him on the sideline of the field. I've seen him with a headset on. I see a sideline interview. I don't think I've ever seen him actually coaching in there. How would you feel about how he did coach as somebody who's been around ball for 36 years and also very Italian? Loved it. Loved it. It always comes down to culture, identity, and process, right? Your process is how you're going to go about your business, 60 minutes, one plate at a time. All you don't got, judge. Don't All you got, don't judge. Yeah. This right here, I mean, how fun is it to be able – when you're winning, obviously it helps, Right. To be able to go in and accentuate and show your show the guys, show the team, hey, these the play like, you know, Saquon running that dude over, guys having success, guys having fun. I mean, that's what it's all about. And then the best thing is like, all right, the praise, the rap rap poison that oh, yeah. Nick talks about us, Coach Saban Perfect. talks about us all the time. Don't start reading that shit. Don't fall for that. Keep your freaking head down. Keep Frickin' working, keep preparing, and good things are going to happen. Do we feel good about the Eagles long term? I think so. Even after all the chitter chat, and you talked about Hulkster after wins, Eagles fans want him to lose. He beats the Saints down there in New Orleans. Uh-huh. You're like, this guy sucks. He gets another win later, but he talked to the fans. Mm-hmm. Remember, he talked mm-hmm. to the fans, which ended up being. Browns. I think what we all understand from the Reddit post was like, drunk guy in crowd yelling at him, do something, do something, do something, do something. Yep. Then he does it, and then he turns around, and he's like, huh? I told you. I told you we are going to do it. The way that was construed, the way it looked, is like he's talking shit to his own fans. They're like, get this guy the hell out of here. Once again, that was after a win. They were winning and having problems. Now, it seems like people are buying in a little bit back into the Sirianni story. Rizzler, you bought back into the Sirianni stuff? I mean, definitely. They, it feels like they have studs all over the place, and there was that little run there where, you know, A.J. Brown was hurt. Mm-hmm. I think Devontae missed a couple of games. Goddard it was a little banged up. Like, they have studs all over the place. It does feel like the Eagles are one of those playoff teams that could get in there, make some noise. I don't know if they're comparable to the Steelers at all because they're much different teams, but, like, same type of – you know, like expectation for them. Like they'll be in it. They'll be in the playoffs. And can they hang with the Lions and the Packers and those big dogs? Uh, who, who knows? But it feels like they got the guys and they have playoff experience too with Hurts. Yeah, I like the NFC. Yeah. The NFC at the top is very good. Yeah. And the Eagles are at, I think the Eagles are right back into the conversation at the top of the NFC. I mean, their offense is loaded. They're on the top five. They're on AQ's top five O line every single week. Saquon's one of, if not the best running back 
in the NFL. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Goddard. Like, they have so many weapons. It's unbelievable. And then defense, the two rookie corners that they both took are now, like, starting to gel and starting to play really well. So the defense is starting to play better now. So, yeah, Eagles are uh, they're going to be a team to worry about. Yeah, I think so. And Jalen looks much better than he did last year. Mm-hmm. Last year, Jalen looked like lack of confidence, wasn't really making the same yeah. amount of plays at the end. Obviously, they the had Bosa a big thing. win streak, and then they go crazy. Yeah, Bosa says, they watch the uh, – first of all, you see my hat? Then he said uh, – Love his hat. I, we know you do, Ulster. We know we know you do. There's a lot of people mad about that. Eh? Yeah, very. There's like he didn't get on stage and like give a full speech, did he? No, I don't think he just, no, he's not yet. No, he actually. Yeah, you're right. Knows, you're right. We know. When he got he, on stage, he might he get up said, there. You know, it's actually it's important. Time. Very, very. Anyways, Bosa said, "Look at the way we played against Jalen Hurts. He's looking at the rush. He's looking at the rush. Thought he lost confidence. Then in that footage, uh, in the plays that we just watched, he's sitting back there, strong, confident, delivering mid mid range shots. You know, mm-hmm. what means he has touch, understands how the offense is. It's like Jalen Hurts is back to being the guy that everybody thought he was going to be whenever they gave him the big time contract. And I think." Whenever Philly's rolling and those Eagles fans have a chance to be showcased, the NFL is better, Chuck. The NFL is better when this Eagles team yeah, is rolling. Vic coming in there new, you can see the defense starting to gel. Oh, yeah, because we so, thought he I mean, forgot ball. Yeah. No, shit. I mean, it just takes time. It's new terminology, some different fronts, some different coverages. To your point, the two young guys. Quinion yeah. Mitchell's given, like, Nothing. he's absurd defensive numbers, right? Like, I think there's one or two catches against him, 30-some yards, no touchdown passes. You guys had uh, Cooper DeGene on the, on the tape yesterday, good D, bad D. Unbelievable. So they're they're only going to get better. He was on the good D side. Yeah, he was on the good D. Which we're pumped about. That was Without a great a play. That was a great play. Great. Back forth oh. on Jamar. And Jalen's not even allowed to play golf. Go cut that guy in half and stop yeah, him. Yeah, what's that about? Yeah, Jalen came out and said that uh, he did not golf. Okay. He was just there with everybody that they're saying I'm golf with. I was just hanging out. You see, in my contract, I'm not allowed to golf. Has Jalen Hurts in his past taken a golf club like <laughs> off his own ankle or like off his head? And they're like, we're never doing that again. Because right? you can't skydive. Mm-hmm. Obviously, sure. there's like motorcycle. And by by these things, but does it actually say it in the contract? I don't know if it says it says we can come take your money if you get hurt doing these things. We don't have to pay for recovery too. Like I think you can void your contract if you get hurt doing these things, and we don't have to pay for it. Like insurance doesn't have to pay for it. So I guess golfing could be considered that because you could, you know, potentially be in a golf cart. Say, look at me, look at me. Turn that son bitch sideways, and all of a sudden he's Johnny Knoxville. Bum, 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 mm-hmm. bum, 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 flipping over there. Yeah, I was gonna say we never know. He could be one of these absolute wackos who takes his golf cart and drives down a hill going 85 miles an hour before, you know, be. both guys are yard sailing and one of them's dead. And, you know, hopefully it's not Jalen, but we've seen enough videos. This goddamn thing's driving me nuts, but we've seen enough videos, you know, of guys doing that kind of stuff. Maybe he just doesn't like golf. Maybe he just says, I'm alert. I'm not alive. Yeah. Legally, not alive. It's Sorry. not fun. Contract. They're paying me so much money. I'm not a swing club. Can't hit fairways, dude. Yeah. And also, you know, he swings so hard because his legs are so big. Yeah. Huge. He might hurt his back. You know what I mean? Mm. They might say golf is a real risk for Jalen Hurts with the way and how jacked he is and how cool he looks. You can't look that cool golfing. No. no. You know, because you got to be stressed a little bit. you got to look like this. This is how you look when you golf. Yeah. Most of the yeah. time. All the time, right? Yeah. Don't you think, H? Yeah, but so, wait, did Jalen, did he just ride around the cart and watch and hang out? Is that what he did? Yeah, he was, was like? Saquon's I think he was at the 19th hole, if you know him. It's also a good oh, excuse okay. if you stink at golf. <laughs> Shake legally, I can't do that, Coach. Yeah, I can't play. <laughs> 